This is a presentation on Lawrence Ferry. Lawrence was born in Chicago in 1892. Uh, as a teen, he was obsessed with aviation and he teamed up with his brother Elmer to secretly build small aircraft in their house while their parents were away. His father, Elmer Sperry Sr., was a co-inventor of the gyro compass. Experience in the family with gyros would influence his contributions to aviation later in life. He attended a flight school run by Glenn Curtis and did most of his early flight training through gliders. By the time he was 19 years old, Sperry was building and developing new instrumentation for aircraft. His major accomplishment was the creation of a gyroscope to be used as an autopilot system for the aircraft. He did this by mechanically adjusting the gyroscope to the controls of the aircraft. Once the gyroscope encountered movements of the aircraft that was contrary to its rotation, it would activate pistons that adjust to the controls. So, um, desperate to showcase his invention, Sperry traveled to France and signed up for the aircraft safety competition held in Paris. And this competition was the first showcase for a variety of new technology, including magnetos and carburetors that would eventually become uh, instrumental in aviation advancements. For this event, he teamed up with a French mechanic named Emile Cachin. Despite not knowing each other's languages, they worked together using hand signals and other forms of body language. So during the competition, uh, Sperry flew a Curtis C2 biplane. His mechanic also joined him during the flight. The showcase began on June 18, 1914. On his first pass above the crowd, Sperry had his arms lifted up away from the controls, stunning them. On the second flyover, Sperry stood up and walked seven feet onto the right wing, performing a deadly stunt in the middle of the flight. When Sperry moved back inside the plane, the changing weight caused the aircraft to bank. However, the gyroscope quickly corrected it and stabilized the plane. The crowd was shocked, but they were now introduced to the concept of autopilot. On the third flyover, both Emil and Sperry sat on both wings, shocking the crowd even more and impressing the judge. Um, obviously, <laughs> they won the competition and uh, uh, Lawrence and Emil won around $10,000. So uh, obviously performing these stunts would uh, earn you a lot of fame. So uh, his introduction to the autopilot uh, gave him worldwide fame and uh, his feat was published in newspapers around the world. General Billy Mitchell eventually contracted Sperry to develop planes that utilize this system. Sperry then developed a sport plane called the Sperry Messenger, which was positively received by the military. Uh, later, the Sperry Corporation, which was established by his father, Elmer, Am Elmer Ambrose Sperry, uh, who uh, prioritized making, you know, general use gyroscopes, uh, eventually began to uh, design aircraft-specific gyroscopes. Um, and the company began producing them for autopilot systems on their aircraft. And it still exists today, creating aircraft systems. Um, however, it was merged with Unisys, another technology company. However, uh, divisions uh, of the company uh, do work for uh, other aerospace manufacturers, such as uh, Boeing, uh, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. On December uh, 23rd, 1923, he left England for flight over the English Channel towards France. There was dense fog and very low visibility at the time, but Sperry was experienced with instrument flight, many of his own design, and decided to take off anyway. Yet he never arrived at his destination, disappearing into the English Channel, and his body was later recovered the next year in 1924. 